So, what we're going to be looking at tonight, last week we kind of dealt with using the Raspberry Pi as a little programming platform. Um, the other probably major use case for the Raspberry Pi is as a little server, essentially. So tonight we're going to be standing up a little web server. Um, so we'll be setting up the Raspberry Pi at a server website. We're not really going to get into the actual building of the website part because we're going to focus more on the server side, but once the server's running, you know, if you could write HTML, you could build the rest of the website. Um, so we saw last week that the Raspberry Pi kind of makes a good programming platform because it's small, cheap, and it plugs in nicely to like things like the internet on one side and you can connect it to the real world on the other. Um, the reason it makes a good server is somewhat similar, except it's because it's small, cheap, and low power. Servers need to leave on all the time. It doesn't do you any good if you, you know, shut down your website every night when you go to bed, right? It's not exactly how websites operate. Um, so you need a machine that can stay on 24-7, be plugged into your internet 24-7, run on its own 24-7, and the Raspberry Pi fits that bill pretty well, because it doesn't take up very much power, uh, it's pretty cheap, it's easy to like set on top of your router and connect it, like I have set up over here. So you can set it up in your house as a little standalone server, keep it running 24-7, um, and use it to serve a multitude of things. We're going to look at a web server tonight, you could also make it into a file server, um, you know, you can have it be a media server, so streaming media to your, feed, to your TV or something like that. There's a multitude of different types of servers you can set it up as. Again, it's just Linux, so if you can serve it on Linux, you can probably serve it via the Raspberry Pi. So before we get started, are there any questions just left over in general? People are totally confused on what they're doing here. They thought this was a baking class. <laughs> yeah, that's next. Um, so the first thing we have to do, which is what we're going to be going through here to make it a good server, is we have to change the way it connects to the network a little bit. When you fire up your laptop and you connect to something like a wireless network, what your laptop normally does is it just asks for the network configuration on the network from some server. It uses a system called DHCP, or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, uh, that essentially makes it so your computer doesn't have to know anything about the network when you turn it on. Your computer will just randomly shout out to the network, hey, tell me about this network, give me an address, give me all the information for how to get onto the internet, give me the information how to decode Google and other DNS names, uh, and it'll get that automatically. The other, the issue with this is your laptop doesn't really have a permanent home on the network. Every time you reboot your laptop, every time you go into a different building, your laptop kind of gets randomly assigned an address on the network. That's fine for something like your laptop, where the goal is just to connect to the internet and browse, but a server, we don't want to have a random address on the network. We want a server to have a constant address because that's the only way we're going to find it. It doesn't do us any good to have a server on the network if every time I want to go to your website, the name of your website changes, right? Um, I need that to be constant. I want it to be andysaylor.com, and andysaylor.com needs to always point to the same network address, and that needs to be the same every time the Pi reboots, every time I use it, so on and so forth. So we need to change the Pi a little bit to make it so when it automatically boots up, it uses what we call a static IP address instead of a dynamic IP address. Um, we also want to make it, as you guys saw last week when we connected to the wireless network, connecting to a wireless network via the GUI is kind of involved. You have to open up a program, you have to click on something. You don't want to have to do that on a server every time you reboot it. You want the server to be able to automatically connect to your wireless network, um, just to have all of that stuff pre-programmed into it so when you boot it up, it connects. So we're going to deal with that first, basically getting the network part set up so that it automatically connects to the wireless when it boots up and it has a static IP address. Um, and then we'll be able to actually set it up as a server once it's on the network. So tonight we're going to be using, uh, I have our own little wireless network set up via this router right here. We're going to be using it because we need to do some things that we wouldn't be allowed to do on the campus wireless network. So we're using our own wireless network. Uh, this would be a good simulation for if you were doing this at home, your home wireless network is probably very similar to what we're able to do tonight. Um, if you wanted to like actually set this up at CU and have it permanently connected to CU wireless network, you would need to get CU to give you permission to set up a static IP address and they'd assign you one. And there's some management stuff here. Obviously, you guys all try to pick the same IP address. Everyone's thing breaks, so in general, networks don't allow you to do this. Hence why we're using our own network, because then I can assign you guys all IP addresses and everyone's good. Any questions before we move forward? <clears throat> 